Howdy is all. Right, so this video, this week, as promised, what we're going to try and do is swap out all of the cables uh, that are what I consider not heavy duty enough. So from the uh, Lynx DC distributor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the cables that come from that that go to the actual inverter, push those up to, what, 70 millimetres squared, uh, I'm also going to swap out the cables that come off of the solar inverter and, sorry, solar charger and uh, get those up to 35 mil. Uh, after that, I'm probably going to try and get the sockets to the two freezers and the socket next to the washing machine. If I'm honest, I'll probably only show you one of those because it's pretty much the same stuff over and over again. So it won't be that that interesting. Um but then after that, and fingers crossed, if we can, the plan is today, boot the system and see if we can actually get some, well, actually use some of the sun and actually use it to, I don't know, do a bit of washing, sort the freezers out or any of that. But so that's our plan. Let's go for that. Let's go. So before we get on with beefing up these cables, let's get another battery installed. So the tool that I'm going to be using for crimping all of these wires, I must admit I'm glad I spent a little bit of extra money and got one with lots of good reviews, another, another good old Amazon purchase, good old Uncle Jeff. Um, however, so important to just make your life so much easier and fill you with confidence that the connections are going to be good. Let's get to it. I think I've probably mentioned in every single one of my solar videos that I intended to upgrade these wires. Now, as you can see, the difference in gauge is considerable. I think I went from 35 all the way up to 70 or 75 uh, millimeters squared. This was primarily, well, two reasons really. It allows for higher amperage, safer, less heat. Um, I would highly recommend that if you do build yourself a solar system, double, triple check what the gauges are that you require for what you intend to pull from the system and the batteries. Um, yeah, just to make sure it's as safe as it possibly can be. Next on the list, let's swap out the old uh, solar charger, which to be honest was a great purchase. I have absolutely no problem in recommending this little unit. Um, I think it was amp inverter. Um, honestly, the fact that it could do so many different voltages straight out of the box, 12, 24, 48. I was gonna keep it, but I wanted, uh, obviously with the Pylon Tech batteries, I wanted the system to be able to control uh, how much power was being pushed uh, directly to the batteries, obviously to make sure that the batteries last as long as possible. So with that in mind, let's swap out for the new Victron unit. Honestly, this poor little 
Victron Lynx DC distributor. I don't know how many times I've had to take the cover off, to be honest. Looking back at all of the footage over the videos, I should have just left it off. Anyway, back to more cabling. to the AC side of the recabling that I was doing and if I'm brutally honest the cabling that I used here is probably overkill but this just stems back to being over cautious I think this is 16 millimeter I think it's 16 millimeter twin obviously with a separate earth I just wanted to make sure that if there was any issues or any problems it wasn't going to be anything to do with the cabling so I thought for the price and the short distance that it needed to run. However, getting it to fit into the distribution box, as you can see, a bit of fun. So what you can't see below just out of frame is our washing machine. Uh, this is the socket that I ran so that when it's a beautiful sunny day or the batteries are full, we can do our washing. Uh, we do have sockets next to the two freezers, but I didn't record that because the process is literally the same. So now we're just trying to get the cable into a little junction box and then straight into the consumer unit afterwards. If I'm honest, this is one of these things that in hindsight, um, I wish I'd done a little bit better. Uh, there's, there's no safety issues or concerns. It's just not as neat and tidy as I would have liked.
hopefully last time into the consumer unit for a while. Let's just get this last one wired in and we should be done. Okie dokie guys, so we are ready to go. Every connection has been double checked, solar panels are all hooked up, batteries are ready to go. So let's see if we can get it to boot. Okay, so good start. Both batteries are booting. Looking good. They're both looking that they're both flashing that they're running. That's good. Oh, here we go. The servo is booted too, which probably means this should come alive at some point. Okay, so that's on bulk. Obviously, there's no power coming in from the solar at the moment because I've turned it off. And pff, what time is it? It must be about half past six, quarter to seven. So I don't expect much to come off of there. Oh, here we go. Hey, hey, hey. System is booted. We have got batteries. We have got a PV. All right. OK, so next, let's spark up the inverter. Let's make sure that we turn this the right way. Okay. That's looking good. Battery 85%. Zero AC loads because the inverter's still booting. Okay. So now what we'll do is let's see if we can get anything off the panels at the moment, which, as I said, I do not expect much to be there on a day like, well, at this time of day anyway. Ho, 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 ho. And look at that, guys. Six watts, 85%, 50 50 watts coming, so nothing. Hey, we're even getting 10 watts pushed into the battery. Right, so that is a proper result. Next thing to do is we need to turn on the uh, consumer unit side of the system, uh, which we've just finished with. And then what we'll need to do is actually go and check the sockets and make sure that they're wired around the correct way, which is quite important. So what we'll do now is we'll just turn you around again and hopefully, okay, and good. So let's go for, that is the pump, that is the tool shed, fridge one, for freezer one, freezer two, and washing machine. System all says it's good. Right, well, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump jump cut to uh, one of the uh, the socket that we just put in for the washing machine and we'll see if we've got that all done and dusted. And would you look at that? Absolutely beautiful. It says correct. Happy days. Well, guys, that's where I'm going to leave this video. Uh, next video will probably be a review of once it's been running for a little while, we might... Uh, have a look through some of the data and see how much I've used, how much I'm getting off my panels, how well my two batteries are doing, doing washing, distillers and the freezers and such. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.